I'm so glad everyone's here tonight. And I know our Father's happy too. He's always happy when we come to be with him. So tonight, we're going to talk about some different purpose and usages of usage of praying in tongues. We've been speaking about praying in the Spirit a couple of weeks, about the Holy Spirit, his job, what he does. And we want to go beyond the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit because once you've received the Holy Spirit, and you can speak in other tongues, that's just the beginning. Some people kind of chalk it up like, well, got that, been there, done that, you know, and then go on and never speak in tongues again and miss out on all that God has for them. God has a lot for us. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us all the time. And he would save us so much trouble if we would just listen. Jesus said in John ten twenty seven, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. He promised. That's a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ. We hear his voice. They hear my voice. And I know him and they follow me. I promise. We're going to hear and we're going to follow. Have you ever had a hard time hearing? Have you ever had a hard time following? Sometimes it's that way. Well, the Holy Spirit said to help us. And speaking in other tongues is one way he can help us become more sensitive to the voice of God in our life. But the first and main reason that we speak in other tongues, and again, I'm talking about personally, in the church is a different story. We'll talk about that later. The first main reason we speak in other tongues is to edify ourselves or to charge yourself up like a battery. If you had a battery run out, it doesn't do its job anymore, does it? Sometimes I feel like that battery, don't you? Like there's nothing left, like I'm drained and I have nothing to go, but I still have to do things. What do you do? Pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Jesus, I just need your help right now. Holy Spirit, please fill me again. Give me the peace. Give me the wisdom. Show me what to do. And just pray quietly in other tongues. And he gives me the strength again. And when you're worn out, you think, I cannot go anymore. Or your emotions are out of control. And we all know when that is, don't we? Sometimes we really want to let that flesh rule. We just want to say what we're thinking and give a piece of our mind or all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we're not supposed to do that. And so to get yourself under control again, it might be good to just get quiet and say, Lord, help me now. I'm just going to pray in other tongues for a couple minutes till I get quiet inside. And you show me what I can say. Sometimes, just well, a lot most of the time when you do that, you won't make the mistakes that you would have normally made. You won't say the things that hurt other people. We don't have to go around hurting other people and then go back and repent later. What if I just listen the first time? God wants to help us do that. So speaking in other tongues is to help us, build us up like that battery. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says, For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. When you're speaking in other tongues, this is a language you don't know. God does not give you a language in tongues that you do know. That would be counterproductive because then your mind would set in and start saying, oh, yeah, well, okay, I must be praying that. No, I speak English and German, but I never spoke in tongues in German. Why? It's not tongues. That's speaking another language that I've already learned. No, it's a language you don't know. It said, when you, you speak in tongues, you're not speaking to men, but to God. God understands it. For no one understands in your spirit to speak mysteries. In other words, secrets. God wants you to pray things out. And because your mind tends to get in the road, sometimes he has to short circuit it and go straight past that mind. Let's, no, let's pray from the spirit. No, you're thinking wrong. Sometimes we have preconceived ideas. This is what God wants. We come to prayer with, we think, the answer already. I'm going to pray about this thing, but in your heart, you've already made up your mind what you're going to do. Don't tell me you've never done that. I think we've all have. Yeah. But maybe it's not what God wants. Well, how about I just get quiet and I say, Lord, pray through me. Show me what you want in this situation. And you lay that thing down. God, if it's what you want, fine. If it's not, then show me something else. Just pray in the spirit. You don't know what you're praying, but in your spirit, you're praying mysteries. Sometimes there are things going on in the unseen world that you don't know. There is a spirit world. It's very real. 
There are angels and there are demons. Other spirits. And sometimes they are trying to influence your life in negative ways, the demons. Or the angels are trying to help you on something, but you keep speaking unbelief and you keep short-circuiting the answer to your own prayer. Sometimes we need to just get quiet and pray as the Holy Spirit leads us. So that we get back on track and pray the things that he wants us to pray. So the first thing, praying in other tongues, is to edify ourselves, to help ourselves. We're talking to God. And you notice when you're speaking in other tongues, you don't know what you're saying, but guess what? Nobody else does either, unless God gives a gift of interpretation. Now, that's something that happens in church sometimes, or occasionally, if you're really praying something out, God might show you what it is. In a church setting is different than just when you're praying in other tongues for your own self. It's not normally, you don't understand that at first afterwards, God might show you, you were praying about this thing. Or this is what, you know, inside you suddenly know something. That's God showing you what it's all about. But in a church, if we pray in other tongues, and Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians 14, there needs to be an interpreter. Why? Because if you're going to speak in tongues in a church, other people need to know what you're talking about. That's a different setting. So if we're going to just speak out, and I stand here and I start saying, Oh, shacharadena Amen. And you look at me and say, that's cool and all. I don't know what you just said. But guess what? I don't either. But if God gives me an interpretation, I can tell you. Now it's done you good, and it's done me good, too. See, that's why praying in tongues like this is mostly for our own edification to build ourselves up. But in the church, always with interpretation. Then it helps everybody. You know who else don't understand you when you're praying in tongues? The devil. He does not pray in tongues. He does not understand what God is saying through you and to you. That's a good thing. Do you really want the devil to know all your secrets? Do you want him to know what you're believing God for so he can mess it up before it ever happens? No, I don't. It's better I just keep that prayer, some prayers to myself. It's just to God. It's only for God to know. Another thing, when we pray in the Spirit, it strengthens us inside. Ephesians 3.16 says they were strengthened were strengthened by his Spirit. Let's look at that real quick. Ephesians. Ephesians down here. Three. Yeah. Paul's prayer for the Ephesian church. He prays that he would grant you. According to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. His spirit in the inner man, the Holy Spirit inside of you. He wants to give you strength. He wants to give you power. But how is he going to do it if you're not ready to receive it? When you pray in the spirit, you're cooperating with him. He wants to give you strength inside. Wow, I need that, don't you? I need that strengthening on the inside. Sometimes when we're praying, there are things things ahead of us that we don't know. But God wants us to pray for them anyways because it's important to our lives. Some things, things were going to happen in our future, or maybe with our family or with acquaintances. or some, something that you need to know, and we need to be praying about it today. You don't know it yet, so how could you pray? The Holy Spirit knows. And many times as you're praying, he will actually be preparing things. For tomorrow we're preparing you for tomorrow you know before my husband died last year actually i prayed a lot in the spirit i had this burden i was praying a lot and uh, at one point i felt him he said he's gonna die now i didn't want to hear that so i tried to rebuke it you know i didn't want to hear that but he told me so I tried to pray and say, no, no, oh, God, in Jesus' name, be healed, in Jesus' name, be healed. But he told me again, no, not this time. See, nine years, he kept healing him. Over nine years, he laid in that bed and almost died over and over again. And we prayed and we believed, and he was healed. He came back out of it again. But this time, it was not going to be. It was too much. He was ready to go. And in the end, that's everybody's choice. We never have a right to criticize someone else for making that decision. You don't know what he went through. I don't. You know, everybody will make that choice in the end for ourselves. But God told me the point of this is God was trying to prepare me. So although when it happened, it was a shock. 
I did not expect it. I didn't want it. I was fighting it inside. But I couldn't say that God didn't tell me. He told me. I just didn't want to hear it. Sometimes he will tell you these things just so that you can start accepting it inside. It's something you just got to deal with. Okay, so I was not totally, as we would say, blown away when that happened. I just didn't, you know. And God showed us what to do afterwards. We need to pray to both kinds of prayer. We need to pray with our understanding, which is with your mind, which is for us, English. That's our, our language. Everybody in here speaks English. We need to pray in English. Pray out the things you know. But sometimes you come to a point in your prayer, you don't know how to pray anymore. And you just kind of have this dissatisfied feeling. You ever done that? I said all I know to say, mm, something's wrong. And then you just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Finish it in the spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's going to take hold with you. We're going to read that in Romans. The Holy Spirit's going to help you pray. And finish it so that it's done the way it needs to be done. I remember years ago, first time I left home, 18 years old, I went to a Bible school in California. Now, I'm how many thousand miles away from Ohio? With people I didn't know, everything was different. I had enough money for my flight. My dad bought my, my plane ticket, one way, by the way, one way plane ticket to a faraway place. I could pay the registration fees in the first month, rent and tuition. And have a little bit of money left, but that was it. I needed to find a job fast, and I had to have money for the next month. And I started praying. I was walking around every night. Oh, God, oh, God, please give me the money. Oh, God, give me the money somehow, somehow. Give me the money, God, please give me the money. You know, kind of, I don't know what else to say. I really need money, God. You know, I got to pay those bills, God. You know it. So I basically begging and pleading him like a kid. God, please, 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 God. And I got some little jobs. Um, they had a job board there, and there were some people wanted someone to clean a house. So I cleaned a couple people's houses, got a little bit of money there. and But it was coming close to paying that first bill, and I was a nervous wreck. Dear God, what am I going to do? But you know what? I think my dad sent me the money for that. And I was so happy. And so I just went out to that same place I was walking, saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm so glad that you gave me that. Oh, thank you. You know, and I'm trying to do it. It didn't seem right either. The first prayer just felt, I didn't know what else to say. That second prayer was just as bad. But you know what? Shortly after that, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. The next month, I had a tool in my hand. I had to pray again every month, believing God for the money to pay for that. In 1976, that was $150 a month. Don't sound like anything today, but it sure is if you're making $15 or $25. That's the kind of money that people paid to have their houses cleaned in. You know, you make those kind of, and you just, but you know what? Month after month, he did it. Someone gave me extra, someone sent me something, whatever it was. He managed to pay, and I graduated second year, two years of that. Debt free. That was God. He was teaching me to trust him. But he was also teaching me how to pray. And every month that I prayed and believed and got the answer again, my confidence in God was getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And after two years, I thought, well, shoot, if God tells me to do something, he's going to take care of me. He had to train me. So he trained me that way. Praying in tongues is such a tremendous tool. When we don't know how to pray, oh, Holy Spirit, pray through me. Pray with me. Help me to do the right thing. Let's look at Ephesians. I mean, not Ephesians, Romans chapter 8. This is so good. The Holy Spirit is right there ready to help us pray. Romans 8 verse 26. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We don't know how to pray as we should. Sometimes, how many times, we're really in that position. I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to pray. But here's the Holy Spirit right there. He's saying, that's okay. I know. I know exactly what to say. Besides, I know the will of God. You don't even know the whole big picture. 
you only see a little bit, maybe a little square, and God's got this big thing going on that you haven't seen yet, let me pray. Let me help you. This one uh, Greek scholar, Dr. McCross, and he wrote that word help, the spirit helps our weakness, actually means three things. It means to take hold together. It means with and against. So literally it means likewise, the spirit also takes hold together with us against. Against what? The obstacles in our life. He takes hold together with us. I'm pulling on a rope. I can't do it. I don't have the strength. And there's the mighty Holy Spirit. He just grabs right on. He says, here, let me help. Let me pull. And he's got so much more power than I do. We'll pull that thing right over. There we go. He knows. He who searches the hearts knows the mind of the spirit. Who is he that searches the heart? Well, God, the Father. He's watching. He's listening. He knows what the spirit's saying. He knows the spirit's praying exactly what needs prayed for me. That's why we want to work with the Holy Spirit, not against him. Why would I leave out such a wonderful helper? But here's another thing. He is a helper. It doesn't mean he's the doer. Sometimes we have the mistaken idea. Well, I just say, okay, the Holy Spirit prays for me. Great, let him pray. I'm not, I don't need to pray anymore. Wrong. We are laborers together with God. That means we work and he works with us. As a good example of that in Mark 16, what did the early church do right after Jesus ascended? The very last verse of Mark 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. You see, they had to go out and they had to preach. And then after they went out and after they preached, then the Lord worked with them. See, if they'd have sat in Jerusalem in that upper room and said, God, I really wish you would evangelize the world, he'd say, cool. But um, it's not happening until you get out and do something. Laborers together with God. Yeah? They went and the Lord worked with them. When it comes to praying in the Holy Spirit, we ought to pray. Open your mouth and speak it out. And then the Holy Spirit will say, great. Now, I can grab hold of this thing with you. Let's go. Let's pull that thing in. Let's change that stuff. Holy Spirit with me. But not till I open my mouth and do the praying. So important. That's so important. Another thing it does when we're praying in other, in other tongues, it kind of gets rid of the selfishness in our prayers. Why? Because you don't know what you're saying. Have you ever gone to pray? As we talked about, as I said earlier, you want go to pray about something and you've already decided what the answer should be. And you really want the answer to be that way. You really don't want to hear anything else except what you've already made up your mind. You know, it's like, I want that piece of candy. God, can I have that piece of candy? Oh, God, I really want that piece of candy. I know you want me to have. Oh, I'm sure it's your will for me to have that piece of candy right now. Well, you know, maybe the Lord said no. I don't want you to have that piece of candy because I've got a bigger piece for you down the road. If you'll just leave that one alone, I got more. See, that's the way it is. That's a silly illustration, but sometimes it's that way. We want to make it up ourselves. And then here's the thing. If we make up our mind before we pray what the answer is supposed to be, and we keep begging and pleading like a little kid, oh, God, please, oh, God, give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that. And we don't listen to what he's saying. Because he might be saying, wait, no, I'm going to do something better. Let's do it different. You know, if you insist and insist and insist, sometimes he just lets you have your way. But it's not the plan of God. You say that can't be true. Oh, yeah. First Samuel chapter eight. Israel was begging God for a king. God had already told them he was he was going to reign over them. He wanted a theocracy. God reigns, he spoke through the priests, and the priests spoke to the people, shared the word of God, shared the law of God. If there was questions, they were to come back to the priest, the priest should go to God, God would tell them what to do. That was God's plan. Israel said, no, we don't want that, we want a king. We want a king, oh, we want a king. And so the prophet Samuel said, oh no, you don't want a king? If you have a king, all these bad stuff, things are going to happen. They're going to take your sons, he's going to take your daughters, he's going to do all these bad stuff, he's going to give you taxes, you're going to work hard. He tried to warn them, and they wouldn't listen. So what happened? Samuel was very upset. 
God told him clearly, I don't want that for those people. They wouldn't listen. Samuel went back to God, and he's crying. And God said, don't cry, Samuel. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. Okay? Give them a king. They got out of the perfect will of God. Do you know how much those people suffered under their kings? They had a couple good ones, but they had a whole lot of bad ones. Who sure enough, took advantage and damaged them and let them into idolatry and away from God. And horrible things happened because these people insisted on being stubborn and not listening to what God had to say for them. You know, that's Old Testament. But we can be the same way today. And that's not to be afraid. But that's simply to warn us, hey, how about we listen to the helper? How about we let the Holy Spirit tell us what to do? How about when you come to pray, you say, okay, God, this is what I want, but now I'm going to lay that aside. You know what I want. I lay it aside, though. Now, please show me what you want, because I know you know better than me. I lay it aside. Show me, Holy Spirit, what you want. And now I'm going to pray in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to pray perfectly, according to the will of God, and he'll show me. Okay, this is actually the picture. And he might say, yeah, that thing is fine. Go ahead. He can say that too. It's not that God's always saying no. He's not mean. He's not, you know, trying to hold stuff back from you. But sometimes he just wants us to hang in there and wait. Romans chapter 12 talks about renewing our minds. Let's start verse 1. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You want to know what the will of God is? Let's start thinking the way God thinks. Let's get into the Bible. Let's find out what God says about us. Let's see what he wants me to do. Let's see how he wants me to think. And we'll know what his will is, the good and the acceptable and perfect. Sometimes we only want the acceptable. And we're too impatient to wait for the perfect. We want the perfect. I want the perfect. I'll tell you what. I don't want to just give up with acceptable. Acceptable is kind of a lower level. Acceptable, good. Good's okay. Good's nice. But then I got perfect. I want perfect, don't you? Let's get the perfect. When you're praying in the spirit, you can do it anywhere. This is a very cool thing. Say you're somewhere in public and people's mouths are just kind of what they should not be. People are talking unclean stuff. They're talking garbage. They're saying things and you just feel, Ugh. I just feel oppressed inside. And you know what to say. You just kind of feel uncomfortable. You know what? Just quietly to yourself, just pray. Quiet so no one hears you. It's no one's business but God. Pray. The Holy Spirit will protect you so it doesn't drain you out. He'll give you strength while the other people are busy expressing anger and frustration and all kinds of things they shouldn't. I'm at peace. I'm at peace because I'm letting the Holy Spirit work in my heart. I can do it driving down the road. I can do it cleaning my house. In fact, I do. A lot of times I do in dishes and I'm praying to the top of my voice. God. Praying in tongues. Praying in English. Praying things out. Walking around this room. I spent a lot of time this week walking around and around this room and praying things out as the Lord led me. I feel it. I have this burden. There's a burden that God's given me now because there's stuff that has to happen. And the only way this stuff's going to happen is if we listen. So I'm trying hard to listen and make myself available. I'm not going to hear unless I'm available. I mean, if my ears are full of who knows what, I won't hear it. So I got to get quiet and listen and pray. Let him talk to me. Pray things out. And one more thing, it will build up your faith. It won't give you faith because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes from here. This thing right here, your book, your Bible. But you can be built up in your faith. Look at Jude. One more. Jude, verse 20. He tells us. And you know, building yourself up is your responsibility. It's no one else's. 
You can let yourself get empty and drained, or you can say, no, God, I need some help. And just go back to God and do it. He says, verse 20, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God. You need help staying in the love of God? Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's get built up in our faith. So no matter what comes against you, you're ready. You're ready to go. We need this in our lives. We need more and more of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. He wants to be constantly there, your companion. He wants to be whispering in your heart, you know what? You know what? Let's don't do it that way. Wait a minute and I'll show you a better way. Um, He wants to show you stuff. He wants to help you out. Have you ever needed something? God, I really don't know how to do this thing. Could you please show me? And you get quiet a minute. You pray in the spirit. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh, do it that way. Well, that's easy. Oh, my keys are over there. Thank you. Oh, whatever it is, you know. You say, well, that's little. But God cares. He cares about those car keys. He cares about you doing your job right or whatever it is you need help. He wants to help you all day and all night. Let's just thank him for it. And we're going to pray a couple minutes in the Holy Spirit together. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came as our helper, our comforter, our standby, our advocate. You're on our side always. You're praying for us according to the will of God so that we don't mess up when we start asking for things we shouldn't. You help us learn what it is that we should be asking. Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us the precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we're asking you to live big inside of us. Help us to be sensitive to your voice. Help us to hear what you have to say to us, and God, help us to be quick to listen and quick to obey. Thank you, Lord Jesus.